The ERF is the key government policy that will enable Australia to meet its international emission reduction or greenhouse gas targets. Uh, the program works by providing this financial incentive to those who are reducing emissions and there's two and a half billion dollars that's been set aside by the government to purchase carbon credits from projects that are reducing emissions. These emission reductions can come from anywhere across the economy, so it can be in agriculture, in heavy industry, in electricity generation, in waste management, all of these sources of emissions are eligible to participate in the scheme. The scheme was set up to enable participants like farmers and others across the economy to develop emission reduction projects uh, and be paid for every tonne of carbon that they reduce or sequester in vegetation on their properties. Within the ERF uh, we see broadly five different options for livestock producers to get involved. The first option is sequestering carbon in trees and vegetation on their properties. And one particular area that's been really quite popular amongst uh, livestock producers is called avoided deforestation. So that is where a producer will have a standing forest on their properties and rather than continuing to clear, they are paid to leave those trees in the ground. So another method that livestock producers may be able to do if they're located in northern Australia, in areas that receive more than 600 millimetres of rainfall a year, is to implement a savannah fire management uh, project under the ERF. These projects involve uh, shifting the timing and intensity of wildfires that occur in northern Australia from late in the dry season to early dry season. It reduces the intensity, the scale and the duration of those wildfires. You can claim the emission reductions that you've created by better controlling and better managing wildfire on your property. Another methodology is called the whole herd management method and will enable beef producers who reduce the emissions intensity of their production through implementing a whole range of productivity um, and best management practices on their farms to claim that reduction in emissions intensity across their herds. Livestock producers may also be able to apply the soil carbon method on their properties. This is a method that enables them to claim carbon credits for an increase in the amount of soil carbon that's stored on their properties. Uh, if, if they can measure effectively a before and after soil carbon levels and show that there's been an increase over time, they can claim that difference as a carbon credit and sell it under the ERF. Particularly applicable to cattle producers in northern Australia, livestock producers may also be able to use the nitrates method. Producers will substitute urea supplementation with nitrate based lick blocks. Nitrate will supply the same amount of non-protein nitrogen to their herds but also has the benefit of interrupting the, the supply or the generation of methane in the digestive system of their cattle. For livestock producers that are considering participating in the ERF there's four things that they should consider. The first is really does this project make sense in the broader context of my farm operation because unless there's really strong alignment between this potential emission reduction activity and your core farm business, it'll be really challenging for producers to maintain and manage that project over the long term. The second thing is that within the ERF there are ongoing data collection and monitoring requirements. So uh, the government just doesn't take your word for it that you've reduced emissions. You have to demonstrate it to them by collecting data uh, and reporting to them and occasionally having those reports independently assessed by an auditor. The third thing to consider is the scale of your opportunity. An individual producer may not be able to reduce enough carbon emissions to make it really worthwhile to do a standalone project it might make more sense for them to team up with service providers or aggregators or other producers to create a project that's large enough to firstly participate in ERF auctions where there's a minimum level of carbon credits that can be sold each year of 2,000 tonnes per year but also making sure that their project is big enough to overcome some of these transaction costs around monitoring and data collection and reporting that go with the scheme. The fourth thing that producers should consider before participating in the ERF is the price of carbon. So at the first auction that was run under the ERF, there was a price of $13.95 paid per tonne of carbon reduced, but that price can change between auctions. At this point in time, there's the Emissions Reduction Fund of $2.5 billion, of which $660 million was already contracted at the first auction, and there's a series more auctions to come over the coming years and the 
price depends on deploying investment, ideas, technology and resources into these projects. So there's a very exciting opportunity there for plenty more projects to come online just within the scope of this existing fund over the next five years. Where things go thereafter is unknown at this stage, but we certainly anticipate with the way things are heading, there'll be plenty more activities, methodologies and technologies that will be sourcing greenhouse gas reductions uh, in the Australian agriculture sector. For producers who want to implement an ERF project, the first thing they need to do is go to the Clean Energy Regulator website. They need to register their project formally with the regulator before implementing it. Uh, in order to be eligible to generate carbon credits. Key things for a producer to remember are is that they must register their project with a clean energy regulator before implementing it. Once they do implement, they need to make sure that they're monitoring and collecting data that's set out for them in the method they're applying. They then need to report to the clean energy regulator on what they've done and they need to um, work with an auditor to assess those claims in order to get their carbon credits. And along the way, they can make a decision about how they'd like to sell those carbon credits.